Welcome to Bread and Roses. Hi everyone, I'm Maram Namazi. And I'm Fadi Boris Puya. We'll be talking about Ramadan and what an awful bleak month hey, it is. Be respectful, Marianne. Be respectful. Stop provoking me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Especially for those who are fastifiers. Okay, yes. Um, we'll be speaking to Delshad Mustafa, head of Debran Platform on Secularism and the importance of criticizing religion. The interesting fatwa is from the chief rabbi of Israel yes. and how secular women are like animals. Mm. <laughs> Yes. And our and slice of life is Atenadaimi, victory. And her sisters, she's forced the Islamic regime to release her sisters. Now we just have to wait for her to be released. Stay with us. Ramadan is a bleak, awful month for lots of people because of pressures. Uh, you know, into conforming and and fasting, but also because lots of people who don't want to fast are forced to or are persecuted if they're not. They're arrested, they're harassed, you know, and I think it's important for us to stand with those who are defying fasting rules and who are being persecuted. It's important for us to do that. And, ooh. Oops, sorry. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> the, I, I think the issue is, sorry, Maria, while, while we uh, talking about Amazon, I think uh, the issue is that um, the, you have a compulsory uh, sort of um, system in um, Islam that anybody who does not comply publicly, people are punished. Um, they are flogged in some countries. The, there are some countries actually the, uh, equated with heresy and people are executed in extreme cases. I've heard of that in Sudan, actually. This and also happened. Islamic State, don't Islamic they? Do that? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have a range of uh, punishment in various countries from uh, execution to public flogging mm. to imprisonment mm. uh, where Islam has uh, political power. They actually enforce it by uh, police and security forces. Where they don't have political power, they try to use other means like arguing for respect for the belief, um, tolerance, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think that is important to recognize. And what about that. tolerance well, be, 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 for our be, own beliefs, for beliefs of people who don't want to have But before we fast. do that, Mariam, can we just yes. sort of drink to... Those people to the health of those who don't want to fast in support of them. Absolutely, and this is important public standing. Mm. It, it actually, the majority of people in Islamic religious societies who do not want to comply with the uh, public uh, announcement and public uh, punishment, and they don't want they want religion to become a private matter. Yeah, and there's lots of examples of how horrendous it is really for people. For example, uh, I just read about an Indian doctor who was fasting and he refused to help a um, uh, one of these, uh, a worker who wasn't able to breathe. And he said, he's too filthy, I'm not touching him because I'm fasting, and the man died. And of course, there are other examples in uh, Tunisia, for example, mm -hmm. they've arrested four men. Oh. Uh, for eating and smoking in public gardens. And you see this in Iran, uh, with the beginning of months of Ramadan, you'll see actually public uh, police announcements mm. about types of punishment and imprisonment they're going to meet out to everybody. And every day we see young people who've been arrested, even oh. in the cars, uh, being pulled out for chewing gum, smoking, drinking water. Restaurants and all the shops who actually sell food of anything uh, of that kind, are forced to close from dawn to dusk. So it doesn't matter who is in need of a medication or a, or you know food or anything. They just close the whole thing down. And this is an oppressive month for everybody. It's very unhealthy too not to eat for so many hours, especially in, in places where it gets so hot. You mm. really need water. I mean, mm. physically you need it. And also, I mean, you, you hear about how it affects the society at large. For example, in Palestine, the 
um, a judge has said that he's not going to allow for divorces to take place during that month because people are so hungry and thirsty that they make absurd decisions. And there's even news about how in Saudi Arabia, the, um, you know, road rage has in increases during this month. Yeah, and I mean, so it's got really adverse uh, effects across the uh, board. So there are different, different aspects to this. One is the health effect. Actually, the consumption of food it skyrockets in months of Ramadan yeah. because... A bit, it's obscene, if, really. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, at yeah. dawn, people just eat so much because they need to survive through the day and the yeah. evening. And in the evenings, they start, you know... Yeah. You know, <laughs> they just carry on <laughs> eating against you and they sleep on it. But anyhow, they, it's just the whole the issue of unhealthy eating. That's a separate issue. The import, I think, the issue for me is the fact that state uh, publicly and in where there is no state power, Islamic group or Islamists by coercion and you know pressure, mm -hmm. community pressure, all of those, mm -hmm. forcing everybody either to comply with Islamic groups or. Um, even people who are not sort of uh, Muslim to refrain from eating in front of people who Out are of respect. fasting. Just, just this, uh, the respect issue, yeah, I think, it's is getting disgusting. ridiculous. Yeah, and that's I make a point. Actually, eat during the month of Ramadan, mm. and it's important everybody to do that. And for the Islamists to learn, the religion is a matter of private matter. If they want to fast, yeah, that's fast. Their right, go ahead and fast, but please that. don't make others fast don't just because you're fasting. Don't bring and it to public if, space. You know, and exactly, and you know, the reality is, it's not about respect. It's about submission. It's about demanding that people abide by Islamic rules, and we don't want to. And there's lots of uh, people who are publicly eating, but also on June 11th, there's a protest in Algeria in defense of people who mm. are being arrested and persecuted. Well so we, uh, we uh, give our salutes yeah. to them. Yes. And also in London, we are organizing a fast defying protest in front of various embassies, from the Iranian embassy to the Saudi embassy and so on, on June 23rd. That's a Friday, the day before the last day of, day of Ramadan. Ramadan. Yes. So do join us if you can. And you know, last year we had this event, it was great. The only embassy that called the police was the Iranian uh, embassy. And when the police showed up, we asked them, well, what did they tell you? Did they say there's a couple of people eating and drinking in front of our embassy? You know, please protect us. Uh, you know. So it, it, it's important. I think it's not it's not a joke, even though it, it's quite fun to be yes, able to drink yes. on and, TV. And, I love it. And make a, pro a po point of protest. But I think it's the important issue to do is it. That, the issue is that not to just condemn punishment in Islamic societies, but also defend the right of people to eat everywhere and recognize that the question of respect now and tolerance is another form or another name for submission. No submission, complete defiance, salute to those who are defined Islamist rule everywhere. <laughs>
take place in the world uh, new uh, vision or new uh, notion towards religion and towards radicalism, towards fundamentalism and all of the religions as well. It's not just Islam, it's not about just Islam, it's about religion and our life. You mention the term enlightenment a lot in Dabran platform and some will say the enlightenment is a Western concept, it's not applicable to the Middle East. Yeah, the enlightenment concept, however, it's a, uh, it comes from uh, Western society or Western culture, but we will try to uh, transfer to convey it in a new concept or in a new context exactly. The new context is how we can use all of these terms, notion, concepts in our society in the Middle East as well. We have got many thinkers, many people who have a very good relationship with these concepts and with these terms and they will try to translate all of these things, all of the thinkers' uh, view to our society in Middle East and in Kurdish society in particular. The other thing that's very clear when you uh, look around Soleimania is this idea that secularism is so important here as well. Uh, can you explain that? <clears throat> the secularism is a term. It has been discussed in our society in the last two decades. It's not new for the Kurdish society because uh, one of the great party here, which is uh, Patriotic United of Kurdistan, they will try to uh, discuss this uh, term and uh, moreover some of the other uh, uh, communist parties as well they will try to discuss this and to bring this in our society in Soleimani as you see because they name it the capital of culture in Kurdistan most of the people here they are intelligent people and they will try this in, uh, people try to show the world they are deserved to be in this city, they are deserved to be in the capital of culture in Kurdistan. For that, we can see a variety of people here. Uh, the secularism will be the main uh, slogan of the city and after that we can find all of the believers here uh, because it's an open society and the city tries to show the world how we can live together, how we can be together. That's the main uh, point of the Soleimani city. What sort of support can people outside give to Dabran platform and to secularists and the enlightenment here in Kurdistan? Uh, sorry, I can't. Sorry, um, the sort of uh, support people can give yes. uh, here to, this, to the Dabran platform and to people <coughs> here. Yeah. Uh, all the people who are uh, working here in the platform, on the Dabran platform, there are people coming from the academic uh, sectors, there are people coming from uh, the other type of work here in Kurdistan. And, uh, and out of this, we have got many politicians who tries to support us, who tries to convey our message to the others. And these politicians are people uh, who uh, maybe um, have got their allies, they have got their funds, and all of these, all of their speech will uh, affect the society, will affect a group of peoples. And most of these mechanisms, uh, which we plan to use it in Dabran platform, will go to support the Dabran strategy to convey the uh, notion of enlightenment, the notion of secularism to the other people. We are just not trying to stay inside the narrow society of intellectual people. They will try to convey these to the whole society, from the street man to the academic man as well. For that we need support from outside the world, we need support from politicians, from uh, religions, from everywhere, everyone who can support this because we want to live in peace. We need peace in this Middle East area. As you know, we experienced a lot of world wars and we have experienced a lot of violence uh, in the name of God, in the name of religion. For that, we will try to get support from everywhere. Okay, thank you so much. For thank you.
Yitzhak Yusef, Israel's chief rabbi. Chief rabbi, mind you. This is you. the Grand Ayatollah of, uh, um, Israel. of Israel. Yes. He's basically implied that secular women are like animals. <laughs> and he's also said that religious men like him, they have so much respect for women and their dignity that he's advised uh, religious soldiers, if they hear women singing, to remove their spectacles. Yes, it's very good. Because not, not to see. Not to see. I don't know how that helps you not to hear because if someone's singing and you take your glasses off, it is because I guess when you don't see very well, you can't hear well either. It's all distraction. Probably. He said you need to distract yourself. He, yes. he, he gave an example that when he was in a meeting or uh, attended by the uh, Israel Prime Minister. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> Sorry, yeah. A woman singer was singing, so he in intentionally took out a book and started reading a book. And to show everybody that she, he's not listening to her because that's just too and much. And he says, yeah, put the book right in front of your face so that they know that you're not listening to a woman singing and that you're paying attention to, to your book. And he's, uh, you know, advised the soldiers to do the same thing. So y you, you've been told that's what you need to do when you hear someone singing. Misogyny, stupidity and It's not just for the Islamic, Islamic mullahs and Islamists, yeah. yeah. Chief rabbi, huh? Bit. After 52 days, Atena Daemi, a children's rights activist, has ended her hunger strike. And that's wonderful news for us because we need Atena, we need her alive, healthy and well, and we're glad her hunger strikes ended. And that's because the Islamic Republic of uh, um, Iran has released her sisters who were incarcerated because of her activities and she went on hunger strike. Now, the Islamic regime has retreated and released her sisters. And that's such a lovely news to hear. Yeah, and it's, it's wonderful because it is that sort of even in the toughest conditions in Iranian prisons, which are notorious, you have wonderful people like Atana Daimi going on hunger strike, you know, protesting, trying to ensure that people's lives yeah, are respected. Absolutely, that's, that's a beautiful slice it's of fantastic. life. fantastic. For us, we hope that she's released soon, she's innocent. That brings us to the end of our program. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this week's program and we look forward to seeing you again next week. See you then. Bye. Goodbye. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are an alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. 
It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.